Good evening. I'm Susie Trudy. I'd like to welcome you to Carlos Jimenez's Mayor of Miami-Dade County's first ever Facebook Town Hall meeting. This evening, Mayor Jimenez will be answering questions from you, our residents, and from county employees. Questions have been coming through three methods. They've been coming through Twitter at hashtag AskMayorJimenez, through MiamiDade.gov, the county's website, as well as the mayor's Facebook page. Now it's my pleasure to welcome Mayor Carlos Jimenez. Thank you, Susie. I appreciate it. And uh, uh, good evening, everybody, and uh, welcome to Miami-Dade County's first Facebook town hall meeting, my first Facebook town hall meeting. Everybody else is here, for first Facebook town hall meeting. And we're going to talk about the budget and, um, and uh, you know, producing the budget uh, required some uh, tough choices. Uh, we, uh, we put it out yesterday, and uh, we have... Uh, you know, reflects some difficulty. We have some difficult economic times that uh, that uh, we're now facing, and uh, in this government, uh, Miami-Dade County government, is uh, it's got to be reflected of that. I, we the the budget reflects uh, some campaign promises uh, that I made, uh, and uh, we have lowered taxes by more than two hundred million dollars. We have lowered the tax rate, uh, but it also you know uh, has some consequences with it. We've maintained services for. For seniors and 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 young young people, and we also ma maintain uh, essential uh, public service uh, functions. Unfortunately, we also have had to uh, uh, looking at uh, eliminating 1,300 positions in Miami-Dade County, and also closing some some libraries in addition to some other cuts. Uh, so it hasn't been an easy process. It's something that uh, we had to go through. I've been in office now uh, 13 days, and I don't think any mayor has ever taking office and having to produce a, a budget in 13 days. But uh, this, is, uh, this is just uh, the beginning of an outreach effort uh, to, uh, to communicate with the citizens of Miami-Dade County, the employees of, uh, of Miami-Dade County. And, but there are other opportunities, and I want to plug one right now. We have a, a live town hall meeting on Thursday, July 28th at the uh, Kendall Village Civic Pavilion, which is located at 8625 Southwest 124th Avenue. Uh, it starts at uh, 7 p.m. So anybody that's watching that wants to uh, to have a live, uh, you know, back and forth interchange uh, question and answer with myself and also other members of the county staff can do so do so uh, on Thursday, July 28th. That's just the the first one. Again, Thursday, July 28th, 7 p.m. Kendall Village Civic Pavilion. And so now, <clears throat> let's start with the uh, with the face the Facebook Town Hall meeting. All right. Our first question comes to us from a county employee um, wanting to know about the consolidation of departments. You pledged during your campaign that you would reduce the size of county government to 25 mm -hmm. departments. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Sure. Um, we are going to be reducing the number of departments from about 45 we have today to, uh, to 25. And um, we produced the budget yesterday, but we also made it very clear that we did not want to issue a table of organization showing exactly how the, the Miami-Dade County government was going to be uh, organized. Uh, we'll do that in the next uh, 45 days. To me, it was more important to do it right than to do it, to do it fast. So we really concentrate, concentrated on balancing the budget. With a reduction in, in departments, we should get more efficiencies, uh, reduction in, in the number of department directors, so we should be able to, to save some more money. Uh, and we'll bring the results of that to the first budget hearing in, uh, in, in September. Great. Our next question also comes from a county employee who wants to know a little bit about the contributions to the health care option. Well, part of my, my proposal is that employees will, uh, I'm asking for employee concessions in order to balance the budget. We had a $400 million gap uh, in our budget uh, once we reduced the millage rate, we also had a, a decrease in property taxes. So we started out with about a $200 million, and then the reduction in property taxes added another $200 million to, the, uh, to this deficit. Uh, in order to cover that, we've made it service adjustments. Uh, we've saved money in that way. The state of Florida, uh, with their new pension uh, contribution, also allowed us to save some money, but we also needed a significant contribution or reduction in, in employee uh, uh, benefits and one of that is a five percent additional five percent contribution to the uh, employee health insurance program that that and some other measures will help us cover the uh, the deficit and give us a balanced budget 
Okay, a resident in the city of Miami wants to know how much they can expect their property taxes to go down. Well, I have a little, a little chart here. It all depends really on, on the value of the house, uh, of the property. The, the higher the value, the more the savings. Uh, for a, a normal $200,000 uh, assessed uh, single family home or residence, if you have homestead exemption, uh, the, you will be saving, uh, in Miami, you will be saving uh, $120 uh, on, your, on your county tax bill. Uh, on home uh, with no, no homestead exemption, and the value has, has dropped because of the uh, $200,000 home last year, your value probably should drop this year. You actually save uh, some more. Uh, in Miami, you'll probably save about $250. Uh, so it all really depends whether it's a homesteaded property or, or a non-homesteaded property. Um, and then the, the value of your property will determine the, the savings. But everybody uh, will, should get a savings uh, with, uh, uh, if, if the proposed millages go through uh, on Tuesday. We have a question from Tufik Zakaria, who sent a question via Facebook. First, he wants to thank you for the town hall meeting via Facebook. It's my and pleasure. And wants to know how you would reduce short and long-term costs such as jails and public safety, which represents about 29% of the county's budget. Well, I mean, the only way to reduce, there are ways to reduce uh, uh, jail costs. Uh, one simple way is to have less people uh, actually incarcerated in jail, and there may be some new innovative ways to, uh, even though somebody may be charged with a crime, that they can be uh, maybe monitored, et cetera, outside uh, of jail. Uh, actually incarcerating somebody is the most expensive way for us to take care of this. We're looking at that. Uh, I'm not prepared to divulge anything or, or make some new announcement about that. Uh, but uh, it, it, to have somebody in jail is an expensive proposition, and the more prisoners that we have, the more expenses that we're going to have, even though we're going to be looking for efficiencies. Uh, we have uh, and will continue in the next uh, 45 and actually the next year to look at ways to make uh, our public or bring down our public safety costs, but not at the expense of reducing public sa safety services at the street level. I'm fully committed. Uh, to keeping our level of public safety, uh, uh, you know, in, in the level that we have, and we have a very good level of service. Abel sent a question on Facebook. At one time, the Fire Rescue Department and the Emergency Management folks were one department, and it made operational sense. Abel wants to know, do you support merging the emergency management back into the fire department? Yes, I do. Absolutely. It's one of the uh, things that we're looking at, and it's one of the consolidation of of departments and also it, it these are like functions I think they're even in the same building I don't think well I don't know why uh, they got separated so yes that is definitely one of the things that we are looking at and in all probability those two functions will be merged we have another question through Facebook um, Lewis understands that your goal is to cut the budget and reduce county services um, I'm sorry reduce county spending and wants to know if this is going to affect his essential services specifically Fire and police, will response times be the same? Well, the, the cuts that we took in the police department are actually vacant vacancies or positions which we think will be vacant by uh, either September or throughout the year. Uh, so uh, that should not affect the, the delivery of police services. The only cuts that we really have taken in the fire department, we, we eliminated 60 or so civilian positions, um, but that will not affect response time. We did eliminate two fire boats, but that will not affect response times to the vast majority of incidents in Miami -Dade fire, that Miami-Dade Fire Rescue responds to. All the stations are open. All the units uh, will be in service. So I, I guess the simple answer to that is no. Uh, the, uh, the services will not be affected. Uh, response times uh, will not be affected with the, uh, with the cuts that we've laid out. Another resident emailed a question. Why don't you cut the car allowances for all the executives in county government? Well, we're going to be looking at that. Uh, I had, you know, I had, I've been in, in office now 12 days, 13 days, and we prepared a budget that was that was balanced. And there are car allowances uh, in there, but this is not the last uh, version of this of this budget. So we will be looking at uh, at car allowances throughout the executive level, and there'll be reductions in that too. Great. Another question through Facebook: Do you believe that economic development must be a, low, a lower priority than spending millions of dollars on, for example, our jails that 
during the recession? No. Um, and, you know, what priorities are, sometimes is a, uh, you, you can show priorities by how much you're spending, but sometimes, you know, in the case, in this, in this question, you know, the jails, we have to, by federal law, uh, maintain certain standards, et cetera. So it costs a certain amount of money to, to have a, uh, an individual, you know, incarcerated. Uh, and there's nothing you can do about that, although we can drive down some costs eventually, but you still have to pay something for that. We are very committed to, uh, to having a new economic development strategy uh, for all of Miami-Dade County. Uh, and hopefully I can work uh, with even the governor of the state of Florida to develop an economic development strategy, not only for the state, you know, for Miami-Dade County, but the state of Florida, and see how we can benefit down here in Miami-Dade County. Uh, there are a lot of ways that we can um, improve our economic development uh, stance and our policies. Number one, we can uh, try to unify our economic development efforts in one location. Uh, we can uh, make sure that our airport and our seaport re uh, keep a competitive advantage uh, because those are the two leading economic generators in Miami-Dade County. We can also start to start look at the regulations that we have in Miami-Dade County uh, that inhibit uh, job growth. And so those are the initiatives that we're going to be, you know, be taking a look at. Those are also the initiatives that we're, you know, I'll be establishing mayor's task forces to, uh, to look at those to start to take away those barriers so that we can, uh, we can create jobs. We're about creating jobs. That, that to me, you know, we, we, I had to balance the budget in 12 days. That was priority number one. Priority number two now is uh, economic development and job growth in Miami-Dade County. Okay. Another resident writes, how will you, how did you come to the decision for closing some of the libraries, particularly those it appears to be that there's some have been affected in the African-American neighborhoods as opposed to some of the wealthier neighborhoods? Well, that's a great question. The, you know, my my direction to the library director was, I want this to be an operational decision. I don't want this to be a political decision. And so the criteria that was used by the library director in selecting those libraries that were to be closed were, were pretty simple. Number one was volume, basically the usage, how many people actually used that particular library. And number two, was there another library in close proximity to that library? And uh, using that criteria, the the uh, director came up with a number of libraries that uh, that needed to be closed, or he thought you know could be closed, without causing you know new, too much, uh, well, it, not lessening the service. Remember, libraries will be open. Uh, it may be you need to go a little further to to find the library, but you know the service is still there and will still remain to be there. Will will remain there. An employee from the General Services Administration Department writes, how many assistant mayors will you have, and how is it going to be different than the previous mayor? Uh, the, the number of uh, assistant mayors, deputy mayors, uh, has not yet been determined, uh, and it's going to be completely different than the structure that my predecessor had. He had one manager, and everything reported to that manager, and then that manager reported to the mayor. To the mayor. My deputy mayors will all be reporting directly to me. Uh, we're going to have more than two, maybe three, uh, and maybe you know one or two more deputy mayors that will com that will report directly uh, to me. Uh, so it's a completely uh, different uh, structure. The current county manager will be in one of those slots as a as a deputy mayor, uh, but unlike the previous uh, administration, and everything will flow through that one county manager. Uh, it's going to be a completely different organization, and there's going to be no doubt you know, as to who is in charge of Miami-Dade County government. Leah sent us a question on Twitter. How will you take advantage of technology like this meeting to save money and reduce paper? Uh, I'm always looking uh, for opportunities to save money, and, and I hate paper. So, uh, I mean, if you saw my office and everything that I have to sign, you'll know why I hate paper. But, uh, uh, yeah, we'll be looking for, for opportunities to use technology in a whole bunch of different ways. And one, one that comes to mind uh, immediately is our permitting process. Uh, when you want to either have, build a building or a house or an addition, etc., you right now you have to hire or, or have to go to our building department. You have to drop off, <coughs> excuse me, drop off plans, and, uh, and it takes forever and a day to get these uh, permits you know, issued. I know of technology that basically the architect or engineer can send it in online. You can, uh, to all the disciplines that need to review the, 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 the permit, and then get online 
uh, real-time comments back, and the person never even has to uh, go to the uh, to our building. Those are the kind of things that uh, that we're looking at. Uh, also, how do we? How can we start to reduce the cost of of even our internal technology in Miami-Dade County? Maybe we're doing things, you know. Uh, not uh, not leading edge and, and not taking advantage of all the savings that we can. So we'll be looking uh, we'll be looking at technology to save save money. Actually save money because a lot of times you get the promise that technology will save you money and then all all of a sudden when you look at it it actually costs you money. Uh, that's something that we're not going to do. A resident from Miami emails. How do you plan on making government smaller when our population is steadily increasing? Well. <clears throat> The population may be, may be steadily incre increasing, and I'm going to try to make, I am going to make you know, government smaller and more efficient and, and, and leaner. Uh, we have to assure that we have the right number of people to provide, pro provide the services. If the population explodes, then obviously we're, we're going to have to you know, rethink what, what we're doing. But uh, just because you have fewer workers doesn't mean that you can't produce more. Uh, there are ways to increase service levels with less people, and that's, that's what we're going to take advantage of. Uh, do operational changes, uh, do structural changes, do organizational changes to uh, get the, the highest amount of uh, productivity from every single one of our employees. Okay, another resident in Miami. You mentioned that you are going to be eliminating 800 positions in county government, and some of those are in the fire department. What positions specifically are slated for elimination in the fire department? Uh, there are uh, about 60... 60 to 67 uh, civilian positions that are slated for elimination in, in the fire department. I'm not going to, can't tell you exactly which ones. Uh, it's, uh, it was drawn up by, I asked for the, a, a reduction in that force and the, and the fire department came up with, with uh, the positions. In terms of the fire department, uh, the non-civilian, the sworn, there are there were something like 52 or 53 vacant, unfunded firefighter positions. Those are eliminated. Uh, the positions that, that were staffing, the number of firefighters that were staffing the fireboats, uh, that will be eliminated, but through attrition. Uh, we're not going to be laying off any, any firefighters. We feel that through the year uh, they can just be uh, assimilated and we'll get the, uh, the savings that we require. Okay, if you're just joining us, I want to remind everyone that there are three ways that you can send questions to Mayor Jimenez. We, you can send them via Twitter at hashtag AskMayorJimenez through Facebook on Mayor Carlos Jimenez's Facebook page, and through MiamiDate.gov. Ash Mark, is that the pound sign? Yes, yes it is, okay. Mr. Mayor. All right. All right. All right. Let everybody know what that is. <laughs> yeah. okay. okay. Guido has sent us a question through Facebook. Um, he understands that the budget needs need to be balanced, but why does it have to be with layoffs and cutting salaries? Yeah, it's unfortunate uh, that that it gets to that. Look, 70% of the, especially the county operating budget, the tax supported budget, uh, a, a large percentage of that is actually, um, it's actually salaries and benefits. And, and there's no way around it. So if you have this kind of a, a budget deficit, uh, you can't simply say, well, we're, we're not going to buy, we're not going to buy any trucks anymore. We're not going to buy paper. We're not going to buy gasoline. You know, you, you have to in order to operate. And so at the end of the day, yeah, you, you have to make some tough choices. You have to prioritize which services are essential, which services you want to maintain. Uh, and then, uh, it's, so it's a combination of elimination of some services, which is the layoffs. And then there's a, the other combination is a reduction in, in, uh, in salary and benefits of the employees. I certainly don't like doing that. I understand the, how, how hard it is for employees to, to absorb that. Uh, when I was, and I've been a public employee myself, I mean, I am right now, and so, but before then, you know, I know what it is to take a, a pay cut. I, I, I took a pay cut in, uh, back in the city of Miami. My wife has taken a pay cut. She works for the, the, the school board, and we know that we have to adjust, we had to adjust our, our uh, you know, our standard of living and, and all that. And I certainly don't like doing it, but in order to balance this budget, you know, uh, we have to do a combination of the two, and, and uh, you know, and, and that's what we have to do. Okay, we have a question from a resident via Facebook. With the public outcry that followed the former mayor's chief of staff being paid over $200,000, how can you hire 
your chief of staff mm -hmm. at over two hundred thousand dollars? Well, because uh, my chief of staff is a, a village manager of uh, of uh, Key Biscayne. He's a professional. Uh, I'm going to uh, cut the the sal not the salary, but I'm going to cut the the budget of my office by twenty percent. I'm going to have fewer people, and I have to have very good people. So I'm going to be hiring top notch people to serve in this administration. Uh, in order to guide us and and, uh, and change the the direction of uh, of this government, so uh, you know I'm going to be expecting a lot uh, of the people that I hire. Uh, I'm going to have fewer, less of them, and they're going to have to produce. So uh, you know that's that's why I did that. Okay, a resident from Miami says that one of the reasons they voted for you was because you said you would work with the unions right. rather than just bash them. Right. What's the difference, and what does working with mean to you? Working with them is sitting down with, with labor, and I understand that, that the labor unions are going to have a position on my, on my proposals. But it also means that we can be respectful. I'm not going to be bashing labor. I mean, uh, the labor unions have, have a place in, uh, in our organization. They represent the employees. Uh, I understand, you know, their position. Uh, I think they understand mine. But also, you know, some of the, some of the working with labor unions, one is the economic issues. And we may have disagreements on the economic issues, but the other thing is, how do you work with labor to make a better uh, work environment for all the employees? And that's where I, I, you know, I really mean that I'm going to be working with labor. I believe that 95% of problems uh, within an organization actually lie in management. Uh, they're management's fault. So I need to know from them, you know, what what their I want their input. How to make you know Miami Dade County a uh, a better uh, place? How we can provide better better services. They have a lot of good ideas on that, and I'm willing to listen. Uh, so th in that case, I think I'm, I'm a lot different than, than uh, other mayors, maybe other managers, where they thought that maybe labor was a problem. I don't think labor is the problem. I don't think our employees are a problem at all. Uh, I think that uh, you know they, our employees have a lot of good ideas on how, how to make uh, Miami-Dade County better, and I'm willing to listen, and I'm going to listen, and my door is open, and I'm right here, uh, right here every day. I get here early and I leave late, and uh, and my door is open to uh, to all suggestions and to labor. And I've said that to them in all the, the meetings that I've had with them. My door is open. I want to hear from you. Uh, we're going to negotiate, but outside of that, there are a lot of other issues that we have to resolve together. A resident from Miami writes that a lot of unemployed residents use the libraries. For example, they use the internet so they can find jobs because mm -hmm. they may not be able to afford the internet at home. Where do you propose sending these people? There are going to be other libraries open. Uh, this doesn't mean that we're shutting down all that. Remember, there are 13 libraries that, that we're proposing to close. There are 39 other libraries that are going to remain open uh, with different, different hours. We're also going to continue our bookmobile program uh, so that we can take the libraries to those neighborhoods where uh, some of these libraries uh, were closed. We, we took great care uh, to make sure that there was a library somewhere in a reasonable, you know, distance from uh, from every citizen, and so then that's part of the excuse me. That was part of the the thought process that went into determining which libraries were going to be closed. Number one, how much how much traffic it had, how many people actually used it. Number two, was there another library in close proximity? Eric writes on Facebook, he wants to know if you're going to make any changes with public housing. You know, I, I'm going to make changes to everything. Uh, and so, but uh, I haven't focused on public housing my first uh, uh, 12, day, 12 days, 13 days in office. I have, during my campaign, I, I know that a lot, you know, the, the people that I talk to, some of the uh, public housing folks, you know, think, say that there is a lot to be done in public housing. So that's one of the, the areas that we'll certainly be looking at. I can't tell you what we're going to do, because if I did, I'd be lying to you. I haven't focused in on that in my first 15 days, and uh, i got to delve right into it and find out what are the problem areas in public housing, how can we make it better, how can we uh, uh, create more public housing, uh, because I know even during the campaign, many people came to me and said, look, I've been, on, uh, I've been waiting for public housing for years. The, the waiting list is 30,000, and, and there's a lot more demand for public housing than the public housing that we do have. Uh, we need to create more. Uh, we need to be smart about it, how we create more, how we can leverage 
uh, uh, developers, et cetera, to create the, the, the public housing stock we need. Martha writes on Facebook, why does a county need a deputy mayor or several deputy mayors? Well, because the, the organization, uh, the, the previous organization where you had one county manager and everything flowing through a county manager just doesn't work. Uh, you need people, you need, in other words, basically what I'm doing is I'm squeezing that, that organization, taking out that one county manager and saying, okay, now we're really the deputy mayor is more like an assistant county manager. They're assistant county managers, I'm the county manager. And so in that, in that sense, uh, that's why you need it. And they may be called deputy mayors, they may, may sound, you know, higher, uh, but in essence what it was before, you had assistant county managers that reported to the county manager and then reported to the mayor. Well now, county manager's out, I slide down, and now you have deputy mayors that report directly to me. Uh, it's actually more efficient. Uh, it's actually much better. And for the chief executive to have a variety of opinions from some very, very intelligent and, and uh, you know, high-powered people versus having basically one opinion from one person. Uh, that obviously didn't work in the past. I know it didn't work in the past because I actually told the mayor when I was here that he was organized. He wasn't organized right. Uh, you, can't, you can't have that one-to-one -one, uh, reporting relationship. Everything will be filtered by that one individual, and then you're not going to have a diversity of opinion. I, as the mayor, require, need a diversity of, of, of opinion in order to make uh, informed choices. Cheryl writes on Facebook, is there a possibility that those in the DROP program, which are county employees, be asked to leave sooner? And if they do, could that save the county money? I, I don't know. Um, the, well, I don't know the answer to the question. And so uh, if, uh, if they could save money, uh, then we'll look at it. Could they be asked to uh, to leave early? I get, there are always you know incentive programs for for people to retire, and and um, and, and basically retire and actually do retire, uh, with a the theory that those high paid individuals will be replaced by lower paid individuals. But you but the only way that that ever works is that if actually you didn't those pe those people that you asked to retire would leave and then you wouldn't replace them then it works. If you replace them, eventually those people you replace them with will, will be making as much money as the high-placed people that you, that you uh, ask to, to retire with some kind of incentive and still pay the incentive. So uh, it, it only works in, in certain instances. Something we can look at, are there people, uh, you know, are there vacancies that we can identify or, or positions we can identify that we could, could actually use less people in, and are there people in there that, that uh, are, are working, can you give them some kind of incentive to leave and then that will save real, real dollars. Uh, it's a case-by-case -case basis. Okay. We have another question through Facebook. Are you concerned that by reducing the benefits, reducing the pay, that it's going to result in brain drain? In other words, we're going to lose qualified, knowledgeable county staffers. Uh, that's always a concern of mine, to lose uh, qualified county staffers. Uh, but uh, at this point, we, we have to uh, reduce the cost of county government. If, uh, if, if some folks you know, decide that they're, they're going to uh, retire or leave, look for employment uh, elsewhere, uh, you know, it's certainly not good for us, but that's their personal, personal choice. Uh, I do know that at this point in time, the real unemployment rate in Miami-Dade County is close to 20%. Uh, even though you know, it says the unemployment rate is 13%, but there are a lot of people that have stopped looking for work. There are a lot of people out, you know, uh, in the private sector, out, out in, my, in, our, in our community that are out of work or that have uh, reduced hours or that have reduced uh, salaries. Uh, again, it's not something that I, that I like to do. It's not something that I wanted to do. It's something that uh, that's just the reality, the, the economic uh, reality that we're facing today, and we've got to tighten our belt, and that's what we're doing. Okay. We got a question on Facebook. What's the county doing about mosquito control? The mosquito control helicopter uh, will is is probably going to be put out of out of service, but we're going to be contracting uh, that service uh, on the outside. We maybe even get uh, the Department of Defense, the the Homestead Air Force Reserve base, uh, to provide some of those services for us. They have to do certain training. All we have to do is give them the chemicals, and then they may be, be doing that. So that's an idea that we have. Uh, I don't believe the helicopter uh, was as efficient 
I remember in the old days we had the air, you know an airplane come and and uh, and and spray and uh, it was you know it, it covered a lot more a lot faster uh, so the mosquito control we will have mosquito control it'll just be delivered in a different fashion okay we have an email question from Homestead um, how do you feel about the economic impact that agriculture provides to the county and what are your future plans to ensure that that industry continues to be viable? Uh, it's a tremendous uh, uh, you know, economic uh, generator in Miami-Dade County. Uh, how do we assure that, that it continues to be viable? Um, we, uh, we can do that by assuring that uh, we have a significant uh, uh, agricultural land, uh, that uh, the, uh, the land that's outside the UDB, that we protect the, the UDB so that we have agricultural land in, uh, in Miami-Dade County. Uh, we also need to look at, you know, what kind of crops, you know, are, are marketable. And that's a function of, of, the, of the, the farmers themselves and help them in any way possible to, to uh, you know, if, if maybe we have, can have a combination of, you know, I know that uh, Commissioner Sorensen, former Commissioner Sorensen, uh, put together some legislation to have, uh, you know, uh, bed and breakfasts, you know, down in, in that area, uh, the, the winery, uh, et cetera. Uh, those are initiatives that we need to look at to, uh, to make sure that it, uh, it stays viable. Uh, a lot of it is out of our control. It's market conditions that dictate what crops are viable or not, what the, uh, what the harvesting costs are, and, the, and basically the price at the market. So uh, whatever we can do to help the farmers, we're going to do. We have an email question. How many departments are you willing to audit to see if we can recoup some misappropriated funds? <laughs> I'm willing to audit every single department. Uh, I want to make sure that we are running as efficient uh, a county government uh, as possible. Our auditing department is, uh, is, um, is somewhat overloaded. Uh, we also have the IG that can, uh, can also audit and look at different departments and see whether they're, they're functioning uh, correctly. We're going to be looking uh, everywhere. We're going to try to wa wipe out as, as much uh, you know, waste in, uh, in this government uh, as possible. Okay. If you're just joining us, you've joined us for Mayor Carlos Jimenez's first ever virtual town hall meeting. And I want to remind everyone, we will be having a traditional town hall meeting right. on Thursday, July 28th at 7 p.m. at the Kendall Village Civic Center Pavilion. And if you have a question for Mayor Jimenez, you can send it via Facebook, Mayor Carlos Jimenez's Facebook page, via MiamiDade.gov's website, or through Twitter, Hashtag Ask Mayor Jimenez. Mata F emails a question. Do you plan on laying off police officers who are out in the streets? Uh, no. The, uh, the answer to that is no. The, the vacancies, the people, the, the positions that we eliminated were actually vacant positions or positions that will be vacant. And I'll be working with Chief Loftus to make sure that uh, we keep as many police officers on the street as possible. I am uh, totally committed to that. I'm committed, uh, I believe, sincerely or, or very strongly that, you know, we render our services at the street level, uh, not so much behind desks. And so part of our initiative is also to, to make sure that uh, the employees that we have are providing, as many employees as we have, are providing uh, services at the street level. Okay, we have an emailed question from Miami. This resident looked at your proposed budget, and a lot of it seems to depend on some of the concessions with the collective bargaining units, which are the unions. So what's the likelihood of that happening? And if that doesn't happen, is there a plan B? Well, the collective bargaining process, um, you know, most people think that uh, the, the collect collective bargaining process in the public sector is uh, you can agree, uh, get down and then sign an agreement. Or when you have a disagreement, you know, it's, it's called impasse. And if we get to impasse, there is, there's a certain uh, a number of steps. And if we can't agree through those n certain number of steps, it finally goes to the commission. Uh, and the commission uh, can either agree with a special master recommendation or the commission can impose the contract for a year. So uh, it, there is a likelihood, a uh, possibility, that this will go all the way to the commission in order to impose, uh, impose the contracts. 
uh, and then it's up to the commission to impose the contracts. If the commission does not impose the contracts, yeah, there is a plan B, and the plan B is not a very very good alternative. Plan B will call for uh, for layoffs and uh, pretty big layoffs, and uh, and uh, could could affect uh, the public safety in uh, in a in a very significant way. Uh, do I have a plan B for that? Yes, I have a plan B for that, and a plan B to to minimize that effect as much as possible, uh, knowing that we may have fewer firefighters, we may have fewer police officers, and we may have fewer employees in in, in other services. Uh, that's why it's vitally important that we do get these concessions, or if not, that it's vitally important that the commission uh, pass these concessions. Uh, this is not unlike what happened two years ago, where the commission. Uh, voted to impose certain uh, uh, freezes on pay and establish actually the first 5% contribution to, to uh, the health insurance. Uh, that was not agreed to uh, by the unions uh, when the budget was proposed. So we find ourselves in basically the same, the same spot. And it actually, you know, it's, it's a spot where I, I wanted to be as a commissioner. I voted against restoring those benefits and restoring those pays uh, and giving a 3% cost of living adjustment because I knew we were going to be facing this this year or actually going to be facing it last year, which we did, and then they raised the millage rate and facing it again this year. The, uh, the impact of, uh, of those decisions made about a year and a half ago uh, are, are, are over $200 million worth of benefits uh, and increased costs this coming fiscal year. And so I've been very consistent in my position. Uh, had we not uh, passed those, uh, that third year of that contract, then basically I would have been asking this year simply for a, a, another 5% uh, contribution to the uh, health insurance. And I don't want to you know, seem cavalier about it, uh, that, well, that's not much. Yeah, I understand that that's a sacrifice, but you know, it, I wouldn't have had to ask for a freeze. I wouldn't have had to ask for the cost of living adjustment and some step increases because they would have never happened. Uh, and so... Um, it's pretty clear to me the reason I'm sitting in this chair right now early before 2012 was that the people of Miami-Dade County said uh, those, that, those, things, uh, those steps that were taken were not the right thing to do. Uh, the increase in the millage rate was not the right thing to do. And that's why Mayor Alvarez was recalled. I got that message loud and clear. Raul writes on Facebook, will the opening of the Miami Intermodal Center help stimulate the economy and will it create new jobs? Well, I hope so. Um, you know, it depends. That's a rental car facility and uh, it's where, where everything, all the different modes of transportation are, are, are going to come through. And hopefully it'll make Miami International Airport a more viable, viable airport. But I also think we need some more development around the airport in order to stimulate actually the use of that inter Miami Intermodal Center. And so that's part of an economic development strategy. There are uh, proposals on the table to develop more uh, non-airport kind of activities, you know, around that center uh, and the airport. And I'm certainly going to be, uh, as the mayor, I'm going to be certainly pushing that uh, to, uh, to make it a, 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 a even a bigger job center than it already is. We have an email from Kendall. What is the county doing to lure businesses that might want to do business in Miami-Dade County? Well, the county uh, will be, uh, like I said, where we get, we'll want a new economic development strategy that kind of makes or formulates, or at least that's what I want, a one-stop shop. Now, right now, there are, there are too many places where a company that wants to do business in Miami-Dade County you know, has to go to in order to establish either incentives or location, et cetera, for business. We have the Beacon Council, but we have the, the chamber, and then we have uh, the state of Florida has, has, has a program, and maybe the city of Miami has a program. We need to all put that in one place. Uh, we also need to stop competing all that much with uh, Broward County. We need to start getting, uh, uh, we need to start having dialogue with, my, with Broward County and, and, uh, and convince them that this is really a region, and what's good for Miami-Dade County is good for them. What's good for Broward County is also good for us. Uh, those are things that are going to take a little bit of time, but those, those are certainly things that I'll be looking to do. A City of Miami resident emails, what are your plans for the Head Start program, and should they be worried about their child's Head Start school closing? Uh, absolutely not. Uh, the, the, the Head Start program, the, our proposal is to 
Uh, my, right now, Miami-Dade County has 14 uh, delegate agencies that actually provide services, Head Start services to children using uh, Miami-Dade County as the grantee grants these uh, delegated agencies uh, the ability to provide services. But Miami-Dade County also does that, the, you know, actually the teaching, etc. cetera. Uh, the fact of the matter is that my, the Miami-Dade County provision of services costs a lot more than the services that are provided at the delegated agencies. And the delegated agencies have to provide the same services that we do. Uh, and so by, by getting out of the business of the actual delivery of that service, we're actually going to be uh, actually granting or giving the opportunity to provide additional services to the children that they, they serve. Do not be worried uh, if you're in Head Start right now and if you are, you know, actually your, your child goes to one of Miami-Dade County operated uh, facilities, uh, your child will be taken care of, uh, your child will have the same services. It may not be in exactly the same location but you'll have access to, uh, to that program. Okay, this is an email from Miami. What encouraging message do you have for county employees who may be feeling demoralized over the public's general sentiment that public service is not an honorable career? Well, first of all, I am a, I'm a 36 year, I have 36 years of public service uh, under my belt. Uh, I always felt that, that public service and feel to this day and will feel until you know, the day I die that public service is an honorable profession. Uh, in order to, to, to be a true public servant, you have to understand that we serve the people. Those people do not serve us. Unfortunately, what's happened uh, with this, these economic you know, times, there have been some, some, um, some things that have happened even locally that uh, they, may, there, they may have been some abuses of, of our privilege to serve as public uh, employees. And that's what's given uh, public employees you know, a bad taste in some people's mouth that somehow we do not, uh, haven't shared in the same uh, difficulties that, uh, that our citizens have. Uh, yeah, I think we have. Uh, and I'm asking for more shared sacrifice you know, now. Uh, but you know what? It, it, it's going to take for public servants to to uh, uh, to restore uh, what I consider to be their reputation uh, is simply let's just do a good good job, okay? Let's go out and be you know good public servants. Uh, let's do a good job, and uh, and I think that will all that will all change. Uh, and that's certainly one one of the things that I want to do here as as the mayor of Miami Dade County, as the leader of this organization, is to. Restore that confidence, again, back in, in public service. Restore confidence of the people that we're doing the right things, we're not spending their money wildly, that we're not misspending their money, uh, that uh, we need to stop the scandal of the day. Uh, and that's certainly, you know, some of the things that I'm, that I'm majority, you know, you know I, I said in the, in the, uh, in the uh, campaign that there were three things I was going to do. I was going to reduce taxes, I was going to reduce the size of government, but I was going to restore, and I'm certainly going to try to restore the confidence and faith of the people of Miami-Dade County in our government, in our public employees. And that's, and that's once I get past one and two, I'm going to be focusing on number three. Uh, you know, the vast majority of employees in Miami-Dade County are good people, good employees. They work hard. And, uh, and, uh, and, and really have the best intentions uh, at heart. Uh, we just have, to, uh, we have to, just have to go out and prove it, that's all. Okay, as we wrap up, I wanna remind everyone that Mayor Jimenez will be hosting a town hall meeting on July 28th at the Kendall Village Civic Center Pavilion. And now Mayor Jimenez will deliver his closing remarks. Well, the closing remarks is thank you, everybody, for, for participating in this first-ever Facebook town hall meeting. Uh, for me, it's been a pleasure, uh, and uh, I, I, I enjoyed it. Did you enjoy it? Absolutely. Oh, yeah, I enjoyed it, too. So we'll be doing more of these uh, in, in the future, and hopefully you know, we'll see what the, what the participation is, and maybe we can get, uh, as, as the word goes out, this is the first one, so hopefully we're going to get more and more participation. But this is not the only medium that we're going to be using. We're going to be using this medium. We're going to be using Twitter, I guess. Okay. We're going to be using uh, live town hall meetings uh, and and telephone town hall meetings in the future to keep uh, 
our citizens involved. And myself, as, as the mayor of Miami-Dade County, as a spokesperson for Miami-Dade County, I'll be available. Obviously, you'll see me on the media, but you're also going to you know, hear me on the radio, and, uh, and we're going to get our message out. And we also want to hear from you all. How, how, how are we doing uh, as your county government uh, as we go on uh, throughout the next uh, 18 months and hopefully, you know, into the future. So thank you very much for, for tuning in, uh, and, uh, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for joining us. Have a good evening.